Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Let's talk money. And welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. So many of us treat our personal lives as this, our personal finances rather, as this outside extra thing that's not really part of the rest of our lives. But our lifestyle habits have a real effect on our personal finances. So tonight we brought in Josh Elledge of SavingsAngel.com to help us talk about how our lifestyle habits affect our personal finances. Welcome to our show, Josh. Hey, thanks so much, Glenn. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. As most of you are familiar with, the rest of the Money Mastermind show is Kyle Prevo of youngandthrifty.ca, Miranda Marquit of Planting Money Seeds, Peter Anderson of Bible Money Matters, and Tom Drake of the Canadian Finance Blog. I'm Glenn Craig of Free From Broke. If you are watching us live and you can stop by our event page, there is an app there where you can ask questions. If you have any questions about how your lifestyle affects your personal finances, and maybe the other way around as well, drop that question and we'll be happy to answer them. So as I said at the start, many of us treat our finances as this sort of thing that's separate from our lifestyle, right? And we have our finances over here, and this is everything else that we do. Um, but the two really do have an effect on each other, don't they? What's that connection? You know, how, do our, how do our lifestyle habits, our life habits, actually spill over into our finances? Well, if you're asking me, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that, that that question was addressed to me. We're yeah, asking we usually start you know, with, our, I'm with you know guess, what? I, but. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm still thrown off. Is it really Marquit? Is that how you pronounce Miranda's last name? I yeah. thought it was Mar. I thought it was Marquis. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I tried to do that for the longest time, and like from show one, I, I, I usually mess up people's names, and I, I think it's all Miranda's fault because I, I try to give it this <laughs> oh, French wow. kind of uh. You have known me long enough that you <laughs> know how to pronounce my name. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, our key describes her sort of title in regards to our show. <laughs> Marquee <key> talent, yes. <laughs> Something like that. So, so in answer, my hair and my eyeshadow right then. <laughs> <laughs> well, ooh la la. So in yes, in answer to your earlier question, you know everything is integrated, and to think that we are that gifted or that talented that we could truly compartmentalize our life is just it's just foolish thinking. So you know it's like if you really want to show up to the finish line of life, um, you know you have to look at all of these areas in our life. So if it's if it's our finances, if it's our health, if it's our emotional health, our our physical health, uh, if it's our relationships. Um, you know, ideally, you know, we, we want to bring those all in alignment. And, and I think that that's when we can truly live a, a life of integrity. So, you know, it's kind of like the same thing that, you know, if you're living a life that's out of integrity. So, for example, you know, let's say that, uh, you know, we've, we've got the Bible guy on, right? Uh, let's say you're living a life of sin and, uh, but yet, you know, you preach righteousness. You know that that's not going to last very long. It's it, the two things are out of alignment and at some point you're going to break or at least you're going to be miserable. You, you just can't. You, you you can't live like that. And so, for example, so let's say that I have, um, you know, professionally, career-wise, uh, I'm doing very, very well. But yet, uh, you know, I've got crippling debt and I'm living above, above my means. And uh, I'm, I'm emotionally abusive to people that I'm related to. You know, you, you can't, Something's out of alignment. Something's got to give. So either you're going to find the other areas of your life coming into alignment with, you know, the the parts that are maybe, uh, you know, need some help, uh, or you know, you're going to have to really focus and and want to improve. Now, here's the good news: is that someone who's really into personal development, like I don't know a lot of people that are really into personal development that have per, that have messed up finances. Uh, or if they're into personal development, eventually at some point in their life, they're going to get into fitness. 
Like the, they'll see that, wait a minute, here I am, you know, and I'm talking about these principles. It just doesn't sit right for me. And so, you know, I've seen so many people. I used to be, you know, just kind of long story short, I used to be 60 pounds heavier than I am right now. And, you know, I felt like I was a good person. You know, I got along with everyone, but I just, you know, I, I knew that for me, I, I was kind of living a little out of alignment. So eventually something's got to give. And, you know, I, I finally said, you know what, I'm going to apply the same principles because I consider myself pretty disciplined with my money. I'm going to apply the same principles that I do to my health as I do my money. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, the weight just naturally, just really easily, almost easily came off. I, I want your I, I want that secret pill because I <laughs> so hard. <laughs> so, so you eat money instead of actual food, and the calories are less. <laughs> and it's it's less you in the long run. Uh, I've been exercising. Yeah. I've been eating things I hate to eat, and yeah. lo and behold, I'm still well this. So you, you know, Josh, yeah. I, I, I think of a lot of people have made that connection. Um, in personal finance, in our realm where if you're good with your finances, it really does um, mirror, let's say, health in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, with the, the calories you use versus savings and, and the discipline, you're coming from it from a personal finance um, side, which is what it sounds like that you applied mm -hmm. it to the other way around. I think a lot of people have a problem when it's the other way, right? So they're living this lifestyle and that's what's affecting their personal finances. You know, so where, where do you make that connection for most people? Well, so, you know, let me let me share with you an exactly, like if I were to really niche down and share with you what I would consider to be my expertise. It's Savings Angel, what we do is for years and years and years, now getting on a decade, we focus on helping people cut their grocery bill in half. And we're really good at it. And so we database everything that all the grocery stores are doing. We data, we have a huge database of over five to 10,000 coupons. And so what we end up doing is, you know, remember that silly show, Extreme Couponing. Well, we just come up with all those extreme couponing deals. And we just say, look, you can have anything you want. And, you know, you could get it for 60, 70, 80, 90% off and even free stuff. So when I started working out these deals and we started coming up with this technology that would do it for, I mean, it would, it would do it automatically. Well, it's, it's almost like, you know, being given the keys to a sports car that you're really not quite ready to drive because, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can get Sara Lee pies for 80 cents a piece. They're normally $6. Well, you're never going to guess what Josh bought. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, bought the Sara Lee pies for 80 cents a piece? Because I could. And so we ended up filling our pantry full of foods and a lot of them were not healthy for us. And so just because it was like, you know, it's like people who win the lottery. They usually go nuts. And because they're not used to that much power, or that much influence or that much material wealth or that many resources. And so you know, it's it's like people who receive windfalls really need to work hard to be disciplined and surround themselves by experts who can teach them um, prudence in in being able to handle that you know that amount of resources. So you know, getting back to my story, so we had this huge pantry and freezer just full of all these foods that we were really literally getting for pennies on the dollar. Uh, but you know, we we had made the choice. We said, you know. We'd actually, uh, our business, Savings Angel, started doing very well. And so we thought, well, you know, you know, maybe it's time we buy a house and we move across the country and we move from Michigan to Florida. And so we just gave away pretty much everything. And we said, you know what, we are going to start over. We completely emptied the freezer, completely emptied the pantry, brought almost nothing with us, you know, food-wise. Uh, and we said, you know what, we're going to start from scratch. And sometimes you really do. You need to, you know, it's like if there's something wrong in your life, you know, if there's something wrong with your computer, uh, particularly if you're a PC user, you have to you have to restart it every once in a while. Sorry, I had to get that little dig in there. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's sometimes it really just helps to hit the reset button. And so when we hit the reset button, you know, we just made the commitment. You know, for example, 
um, you know, things like soda. Well, I love drinking soda, but I just made the conscious effort. I Look, as much as I want to drink it, if I don't buy it, I'm not going to have it in the house. And if I don't have it in the house, I'm less likely to drink it. And so, uh, you know, it's easier for me to not buy soda than it is for me to not drink soda. Does that make sense? So um, I just, I limit my exposure to the things that I know are not leading me to down the path that I want to uh, head to. It's like knowing your weaknesses and uh, yeah, and, and knowing where your discipline has a, a crack in it. I mean, I totally know what you're saying. If I have like a bag of chips in the house, if it's not open, you know, it's kind of just sitting there. But once it cracks open, <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, what is this half-eaten bag of chips? Long. I gotta clean this up. Yeah, yeah, they don't <laughs> last long. You know that yeah. one. Well, you know, chip and turns into uh, a bag. <laughs> yeah. No, and Glenn, I don't know if your mom made you clean your plate, but there's so much like this psychology that lives with us that we feel like there's just certain things we have to do that are actually not really healthy for us. That being one of them, you don't need to clean your plate. We're all adults here now, and and I I almost consider it now thumbing my nose at my my mom, you know, that like, ha, look at all this food I'm not eating. <laughs> you know, I'm going to put it back. But, but, Wait, you, you're not mailing it out to people in other countries that might be starving? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no. Because, see, that would make mom happy. So, no, it's, <laughs> this is my passive aggressiveness coming back. So, so if, you're, if you're throwing out your food, how does that work with your fun? financial philosophy. No, I didn't throw it out. Miranda, I gave it away. And that's kind of our whole mission at Savings Angel. Get out of here. Throw it away. I, I'm stingy. I, I'm I'm very frugal. I don't throw anything away. But I but yeah. so so we you know so in in our church um we actually had a, a new family that moved in and they had nothing and I'm like you know this was just God putting this all together and so I'm like this is so perfect. We're looking to clean house. You're looking to fill your house and uh you know that was just fabulous I, I love how sometimes those things work out so no i didn't throw any throw things away <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. painful look at how angry he is <laughs> <laughs> you know, and i will tell you that one of the biggest points of contention uh between my dear wife and i and we've been married we'll, we will have been married now at the end 20 days from the time we're recording this we'll be married 20 years and there's very few things that i think that you know, that, that I think still are difficult for us to do. And I think that the thing is probably the most difficult is when she wants to go through the refrigerator or the pantry and start de-junking and getting mm -hmm. rid of things that have expire, you know, expiration dates. Uh, that for me is just like, it's so hard for me, for me to do that. So, and she, she also has that, uh, mistaken, uh, thinking that if, if the date on the package has passed, that it's no longer good. And and we know that that's not true. Matter of fact, a really good website, um, well, just while I'm touching on this subject, is a really good website. It's called stilltasty.com. Expiration dates, people, have absolutely no bearing on food safety whatsoever. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's the FDA. So you see me like flailing my arms around. I'm really passionate about passionate. this subject. I, I would make one away your exception, food. though. Yes. Milk gets really close to that date. Yes. Uh, so give it this. <laughs> give it the old smell. The old smell test, and and uh, yeah, it, your nose will usually not steer you wrong. I love yeah, you it. know, you, you touched on kind of uh, how when something's out of line in your life, you know, one one thing's wrong in your life, it'll affect other areas in your life. And you know, there have been studies too showing that uh, people that are are doing well in their finances also do well. Uh, with their health and fitness. Yeah. There's a study out of, out of Washington University in St. Louis that found that future-minded people who contributed to a 401k were much more likely to take steps to improve their health as well. And then there's another study out of the University of Michigan that found that people with low credit scores uh, could be used to predict that uh, increased risk of uh, heart problems and cardiovascular disease. So, mm. you know, it, it may come down to partly self-control, partly other things, but but these things are related, and uh, you know, if you have that self-discipline to be able to uh, do well with your finances, you may also have the, the self-discipline to, to do well in fitness in other areas as well. Yeah, I forget whose book it was or in which study it was, but it was similar in, in what you were saying, Peter, where mm -hmm. if you tracked your finances and daily spending in a journal every day, um, you also tended to it, it tended to spill over into your health as well. So you tended to be a little more conscious of what you were eating and what you were doing every day. So that habit tended to 
um, invade your thinking for the rest of your lifestyle as well. So that's interesting. Um, well, and how that works. And and you know the app that I used that helped me lose all my weight was uh, My Fitness Pal. And all My Fitness Pal is is just logging everything that you eat. And so the the very nature you're it, you're so right because the very nature of of giving myself permission to eat anything I want. This is how I lost the weight is that I just committed to just tracking everything that I put in my mouth. And there were so many times when I, I said, you know, I could totally eat that that bowl of, uh, well, I just got some Star Wars cereal today. Come on, I'm a Star Wars fan. I cannot not get the Star Wars cereal. I, I hope that's I, new Star Wars cereal and not like original 77 stuff. <laughs> Still tasty. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, <laughs> So I could totally eat the Star Wars cereal, but I'd have to log it. And there are some times I'm like, you know, just being conscious about it. And this this will get into something I know we'll touch on in a little bit about about being living more consciously and living more mindfully. But I, I apologize, Glenn. I believe I interrupted you. Uh, no, no. Go go ahead with your point. <laughs> I, I no, think you guys it. make a great point, though, about uh, tracking things, keeping on top of your finances. It's the same... I'm doing the same thing right now. I'm losing weight. I'm doing Weight Watchers, and they have the app, too, where you're tracking yeah. everything that you eat. And just being aware of what you're putting in your mouth every day, is, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, I can't believe I ate that many calories before. In the same token, when you start tracking your finances, you're thinking, you know, I, I don't spend that much money every month. But then it's like, oh, my gosh, we spent $1,200 on eating out last month. How did that happen? You know, so just taking that daily habit of actually checking up on what you're doing uh, can be huge in terms of uh, getting things under control and, and uh, making positive changes. Yeah, and I think, too, though, sorry, one, <laughs> one of the things, though, that I noticed when you were talking about, like, health and finances and the connection is part of it, it can start to be kind of a spiral because uh, they've also done studies where if you're stressed out about your finances, so if your finances are in bad shape and you're stressed out about it, that in turn can affect your health because mm. you have that oh, stress. Yeah. And that anxiety and stress and anxiety have physical and mental implications for your health. So then it starts to become this uh, this, this vortex of pain, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this, you know, where where you feel terrible, you're stressed out, it's awful. So a lot of the time people relieve that by spending on, you know, either they spend because it's shopping therapy or they spend on, you know, self-medication things like alcohol, which is extremely expensive. And, and other things like that. And so then you're spending all this money, so then you're more stressed about your situation, so then your health goes downhill more. And so it becomes a cycle. And, and they've done studies showing, too, that if you have poor finances, that affects your health. And, of course, then your health kind of can sometimes be a reflection of your finances. So it, it, I think it goes both ways. So, I mean, I think the key point there is it's not so much that if you're not taking care of your finances, maybe you're just putting too many charges than you need to, that all of a sudden your health is going to go bad, but that it causes a, a real stress on your life. Oh, right. my goodness. And when you you're know, stressed, that, that's, that's what causes you to make those bad decisions. You better believe it. And you know, and I've done some work, some advocacy work um, on behalf of employers and, and done some financial wellness education in the workplace. And you know, right now, depending on which study you look at, you know, one study showed that 76% of Americans are currently money stressed. And the impact on the workplace is huge. Absenteeism goes up, decreased productivity, you've got a greater turnover, garnishments, increased dependence on assistance programs, it impacts physical health, it, you know, so healthcare costs go up, um, they're not participating in their company's 401k plan, they're not retiring on time. I mean, there are so many areas uh, that are negatively impact when we're leading a money-stressed life. It's so, so interesting in how stress has such a, a an impact on, on everything we do. Um, but, you know, I think no. we've still been talking about it as a money side and how that affects our lifestyle. And, and I want to see if we could get that other way going um, hmm. where, like, how, how do you change your lifestyle and then affect your finances? So, Glenn, I'm I'm a consumer guy. And so when I – like, if I were to talk to just, like, a, a an audience – full of just like a cross-section of the population. Um, I know that a certain percentage of those folks are, they're stressed out about their finances. And so, you know, for me to start 
telling them, well, you need to be investing in your company's 401k plan because that's good for you. You know, it's they start they start tuning out. You tell them, you know, that they need to start saving for their kid's college and they're more concerned about paying for their kid's doctor bill. And so, I, you know, I've always been really fascinated by, you know, what are the things that all the greatest percentage of us have in common and and I have a real heart for those who are you know truly living uh, with that stress because I've been there and I think most of us have experienced that financial stress at one point or another and so you know if if I can show them the life hacks that would cause them you know if I said look you don't have to be extreme in one area but if I could just show you a few things and it would mean an extra three to four hundred dollars in your bank account every month would that make a big difference like if I were to sit here and write a check for four hundred dollars every month and just give it to you would that really take a take the edge off things everybody says yes to that and four hundred dollars is easy easy to recover in an average budget and I'd say you know and again you know kind of one reason that we've really just hammered on the grocery budget is because almost everybody is spending way too much at the grocery store they're spending way too much eating out and it's so easy to fix imagine if the gas stations, you know, the price of gas fluctuates. And, you know, when we see a good price on gas, we're like, oh, wow, gas is a uh, 209, you know, like, oh, you know, we, I, I got to fill up. Even though I only need like an eighth of a tank, you know, I, I got to go and enjoy that cheap gas. And, you know, I feel like I'm like the uh, the guys uh, in Zoolander who are like just spraying the gas all over just because you can, just because it's so cheap. Um, you know, but, you know, it, is as wildly as we feel that the price of gas fluctuates, the price of consumables and groceries fluctuates by crazy amounts, like 50% or more. It's really easy to get your groceries at half off. Now, what most people are doing when they go grocery shopping is that they're buying you know, they try to buy what's on sale, but largely what they are buying are the things that they need. And if the person listening to us remembers nothing else about that guy who talked way too fast and was just way too excited about uh, groceries and, and uh, that sort of thing, uh, is if they remember nothing else, is remember this. Need-based shopping is the worst absolute worst way that you could feed your family. It's way too expensive. So what does that mean? It's when you go into, it's like going onto a used car lot and you say, well, used car dealer, this is, this is what I need. I need, you know, I need a moon roof. I need, you know, bucket seats. I need, you know, uh, heated, you know, whatever. You just start listing like all these demands and you say, and I am not leaving your used car lot until you give it to me. Well, how much negotiating power do you have? You have zero. Now, when you go into a, a grocery store and your your sweet wife or your husband gave you a list of things that you're supposed to buy and your kids are counting on it and if you come home with come home without it and I've done this you know you come home come home without um, something that uh, my wife said I was supposed to buy well I'm gonna get in trouble so um, we want to so but but the, here's the thing again if you're if you're stuck with a list then you have to buy those things and so you scan kind of up and down the aisles you're like oh gosh I guess I'm buying store brand or I guess I'm gonna go to Walmart because that's how you save money well that's how my family and I were shopping and we were still spending eight hundred dollars plus every single month that's what everybody does to cut a grocery bill in half and I've studied all the experts and I've been an expert in this field for eight nine years now here's what you have to do one of you've got two options right and, and these are the only two options that are really going to make a big difference. Number one, you could grow all your own food. Good luck with that. I, you know, I I am just like I, you know, don't ever give vegetable seeds to me because they may as well you may as well just just throw them in the garbage because I you can't, I can't you can't grow Star Wars cereal either. No, that's see that's the biggest problem is you can't grow Star Wars cereal. Which by the way, it's not good cereal. I'm not recommending that cereal, and it's not probably not healthy for you either. Uh, so yeah, so that's out for people like Josh. You know, I'm too busy, uh, not going to work with with my uh, lifestyle. So your other only other option is that you need to work with the grocery stores and here's what you do you need to use coupons but coupons by themselves um, the, 
they're only going to get you so far, right? If you get a coupon, you're like, okay, great. Now I got to buy this product. You know, I get 50 cents off, uh, you know, but the product's full price and, you know, it's just cheaper to buy store brands. So sometimes coupons by themselves work out okay. Sometimes they don't. And you should also, however, you should buy things that are on sale. I mean, that's just common sense. But the magic happens when you find the absolute best deal. A $1 coupon comes out for Cheerios and your local grocery store has Cheerios for buy one, get one free. Well, now you're getting Cheerios for 99 cents a box instead of $4 a box. Well, I want to make sure that when you find those deals that you stock up and you buy enough to last you through about at least 13 weeks because that's that's the typical product cycle of we see you know where you can find these lowest prices on different products now if you'll just do this stop buying what you need and when you get a really great deal you absolutely load up now you can use our free coupon days free, free coupon database at savings angel or you can you know find this information out on your own it's not rocket science um, but if you if you only did that and you just stock up, I mean, that's really all you need to do. And you can easily, easily pocket $200 a month. Uh, I mean, and that's just in groceries. Now, most people that are really good at this can pocket about $400 uh, from their grocery bill alone. That's if you get really good at it. And and I don't want someone to think, oh, you know, I feel I'm gonna feel like I'm like my mom on Sunday mornings when she was clipping all the coupons. And today's couponing is unlike anything you've ever seen before. It's all digital, it's all automated, it couldn't be easier. Stores will let you just clip all the coupons and add them to your account, and so it's automatic. You swipe the card at the counter, and it couldn't be easier. And here's the deal: people who have figured this out are earning forty to fifty dollars an hour for their time. People who refuse to take this seriously are losing by default two, three hundred dollars every single month. By default, just because you're not willing to take a look at this. Now I, I have a couple of contentions with what you're saying. Please. I get what you're saying and and I do agree if you time things out right and you have the right coupons and maybe you're going to the right stores and you do a little price comparison, you can make a killing, right? You can really do well. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing just because you have a coupon, just because you have a great deal, you know, stocking up on 13 weeks at Twinkies isn't necessarily the best thing for me. Well, that would be stupid. And and so no one, no one you know should think that. <laughs> no. a lot of times well, Glenn, I take exception with your example because that's that's moronic. So. <laughs> but, you know what? That's a pretty extreme example, but there's a lot of foods that are fall in, in between. Tell us how you really feel. Yes. In between, well, let's say, getting back and, to my earlier example. you might get at a Whole Foods, and there's yes. a lot of foods that fall in between where you think maybe it's kind of healthy-ish, maybe you eat a lot of it, right. but really it's all full of salt, it's all full of sugar, it's all full of fat. With great power comes great responsibility. And so, <laughs> like I said, you know, kind of like with my Sarah Lee example earlier, just because you have the power to buy junk food at 80% off, and trust me, if you want coupons for junk food, oh, I can show you coupons for junk food. But if you want coupons for healthy, more whole, uh, minimally processed food, guess what? You can, there are more coupons than Ever for all of those types of products. So, you know, yeah, does it mean that you might pay a little bit more? Yes, but you know what? Is an investment in your health? Absolutely. But here's the deal. If you're committed to spending, say, $1,000 a month because you do feed your family, uh, you know, maybe more uh, exclusive products, uh, then you, more than anyone, really need to take this seriously because uh, you can save a, a big, a significant portion of your money by looking for those healthy whole uh, coupons. And like I said, we've got over 5,000 coupons in our coupon database. At the very least, why don't you take a look uh, and see what you can find. So think of the different product brands that, that you like. Um, and believe it or not, you can get product, you can get coupons for like tomatoes and you can get coupons for oranges and, and, and all of these uh, produce items. Uh, Saving Star is, is one of the coupon providers that we work with. And every single week they have a coupon for 20% off some produce item on top of whatever sale you may find. I don't think uh, coupons are as common here in Canada, but we do a lot of uh, flyer shopping, and uh, I, I think I probably do a mixture of what you're talking about because we shop needs based. But when something that we would buy regularly is on sale, then yeah, we we back up the truck Good. and 
<laughs> load up, but uh, As, but 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 we're not buying Twinkies. We're buying. We're literally like, oh, this is an item that we would buy anyway. We don't need yeah. it today, but I'll buy a month's supply. <laughs> see, it's, it's... Glenn, Glenn, see, people can do this right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I like to think that we're exceptional. <laughs> but and, and I'm not trying to be elitist, but I think a lot of us have gone through a lot of the things that we talk about. You know, we've gone through money problems, maybe we've yes. gone through some health problems. So we're coming from it maybe from a different place. Um, and a lot of times, you know, we're, we're preaching to the choir here. We're, we're, we agree with everything that we say, but it's not necessarily what, what our listeners um, – that may not be with the same place they're coming from mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's why, you know, I bring that up. You know, for me, it's not so much about chasing after the coupons at the supermarket. Mm -hmm. It's about just changing completely where I'm going to shop. You know, so I'll go to maybe a Trader Joe's or, or something like that, a more specialty supermarket, where maybe the coupons aren't even as available um, for the food. Yeah, and then there are coupons available, like Whole Foods, uh, you know, that's one store that we database. And so, like I said, you can absolutely make this work in your lifestyle. But here's the thing, too. I am not, you know, one of the, you know, those consumer advocates or consumer experts that says, you know, and you need to cut out the lattes and you need to cut your cable TV. I mean, you really have to look at the things that bring you joy and pleasure in life. And, you know, I, I pay a lot of money to Comcast every single month. But you know what? That's what brings me joy. So, you know, at night, I love to grab my iPad and I love to watch something that's, you know, streamed off of the Comcast app or, uh, you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's worth it for me. It's a premium and, and it's an investment I make in something that I enjoy is, is having, I, I love having access to that much entertainment. Do I need it all? No. You know, could I, can, you know, could I cancel it and save a little bit of money? Sure. But, you know what? It's imp it's important enough to me that now, trust me, I call Comcast every few months and negotiate because that's just smart. But, uh, you know, again, I, I think we just need to, you know, for you, Glenn, you're talking about, you know, how much you value food. And so, you know, and, and making those choices and, and you, you get a lot of pleasure out of that. So by no means would I tell you that you need to start buying things that make you uncomfortable. But, you know, in learning all of the life hacks. So if we look at... If if we really do a line item budget and we look at everything that we're buying on a regular basis, um, I would hazard to guess that the, even the savviest of us could use a tune-up from time to time where we just want to make sure that we're bringing everything in alignment. And so, you know, uh, if it's, you know, resisting the urge to upgrade our car and instead, you know, maybe a good compromise is upgrading the car stereo. That's what I, you know, that was one thing that I recently did. Um, you know, there are lots of little tweaks that you can do. And collectively, I mean, by not upgrading my car and still driving a car that's in great shape but still has over 150,000 miles in it, uh, on it, uh, that is saving me a ton of money. Yeah, I, mean, I like to look at it as like it, it's the options, right? By not doing yes. that with your car, now maybe you could spend a little bit more on your food or spend a little bit more on the cable. Um, but still not be over budget. Mm -hmm. oh, or, you know, this, you know, not really in my wheelhouse, but investing in yourself. This is where I would defer to you guys uh, to, to talk about, you know, the power of that. And, um, you know, I, I feel like if you can help someone go from money stressed to money confident, then it's like their options have just opened up. And it's like this whole world that they felt was elusive to them, you know, uh, you know, saving more for retirement and, and maxing out your 401k and, and doing all these things that, you know, maybe you've heard of, but you've just kind of shut down with, uh, you know, and the, the person who's listening to this program, by the way, they're the converted, sure, they, you know, but they're also ambassadors for this mission and this mission is helping people live a more abundant life and so uh, I, I uh, always acknowledge that the choir is in the congregation uh, but the choir are my best disciples when they're out on the street. Well, I, think, though, I think you make a good point though about figuring out what's important to you in your lifestyle and then kind of going around that with your money your money strategies because in my case, like I hate grocery shopping, I hate yes. meal planning, I hate all of that. So my solution was to sign up for Blue Apron and have them plan all my meals and send me all the ingredients to my doorstep and the 
recipes and everything I need to just just take care of it, and I don't have to do that. Right, right. And well, and, and you're self-employed, Miranda, so yeah. that frees you up to earn more than the premium that you would pay with Blue Apron. So that oh, that's sure. return on investment, in my opinion. Oh yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah, that's huge. You know, we've talked about that on on this show before about figuring out what you value in life and and uh, you know working your money strategies around what you value. You know, maybe uh, the food isn't the thing, but maybe you value travel or whatever it is. But you can sit down and, and plan your daily habits and the habits that you're doing every day, and make them work towards your goals of what what you want, you know, what you value. Mm -hmm. So sit down and figure out a budget. You know, save an emergency fund. Make sure you're all set for life's little situations that are going to happen so that you don't have to worry about them as much. And then, you know, set about uh, working towards those things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Set about working towards your goals with, with your daily habits that you're doing. Yeah, and you know, I know, and everybody knows that if you have a little bit of a cushion, it's going to save you money in the long run. I mean, that's obvious. You know, and, and you know, just a you know, one other thing. You know, utilities. That would be another one where, uh, if you really study, you know, the use of electricity and just come up, you know, really just try out a lot of these different life hacks, and you invest in different technology, invest in smart, uh, in smart thermostats. Uh, you really get geeky about this stuff. There's a lot of savings in your utility bill as well, especially for those of us in Orlando, Florida. It is, by the way, it was, it was like close to 90 degrees. It, I'm looking at my temperature right now, and it's still 81 degrees, and it's 1038 at night. Absurd. It froze no, here last more, night, so th thanks for that, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's more absurd because I'm up in New York and it's kind of like uh, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Great 70 degree weather here in Idaho, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, um, you, you know, you mentioned something uh, a couple of minutes back how um, having a cushion can save you money. Um, can we talk about that for a sec? Like, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, yeah, it, it gives you choices, right? And and choices are always good. And so if 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 I am limited in my choices and I say, well, I only, you know, the water heater went out and of course these emergencies, I feel like I'm going back to really 101 stuff. So if there's someone who's listening, it's like, oh, come on, please. You know, this is so elementary, but still it needs to be said because again, the choir needs to go out on the street and they need to do the, you know, they need to do the work. Uh, but, you know, again, choice, you know, having those choices means more freedom. More freedom means you have the ability to prepay a bill for a year and as a result you know that service provider gives you 15% off and I love negotiating and here's something and I want the person who uh, I want everybody to remember this is uh, everything is and, and everybody should know this I mean nearly everything is negotiable and you know if you have extra money any service provider, I don't care who they are, if they're, you know, if you have lawn care help, if you, whatever it is, ask them, you know, how much they'd be willing to take up the bill uh, if you were willing to pay them a full year's in advance. And, you know, then you have to weigh that against what you would earn with that, you know, lost, um, uh, you know, lost investment. Well, what's the term for that? You guys are the, the smarter personal opportunity finance. Opportunity cost. Opportunity, yes, opportunity cost. Uh, so, but, you know, we've saved all kinds of money by, uh, just, you know, cutting a check and say, we're done for the year. Um, so those are the kind of freedoms that, that, uh, people who have extra capital can enjoy and people who are living paycheck to paycheck, uh, they pay 10 to 15% more every month because they are paying their bills month to month. Well, I'm really on a more basic level too, though. One of the reasons that, uh, an emergency fund or, uh, backup fund or a rainy day fund or whatever can help mm. you is it prevents you in an emergency situation from having to do turn to your high interest credit card. Oh yes, yes. So I think that's one of the one of the biggest benefits. And then you also get that peace of mind, which goes back to what we were talking about with stress and with health and with mm. making good decisions. It's really hard to sit down and view something uh, a little more rationally or kind of strategize when you're really stressed out about well, how am I going to handle this emergency? What am I going to do? And you know, you're, you've just you've got the stress response and it's really hard to think straight. And yeah. 
hard to make those decisions and calmly kind of say, okay, here's what I can do. Having that backup fund gives you a way to say, okay, uh, we're going to be okay. Let's take a step back and evaluate the situation. Can I share yeah. a concept that I think that pretty much anybody could do as well is if they absolutely feel like they just cannot get that savings and it just always feels elusive to them month to month, uh, I'd like to float the idea of a food savings account. And this is one thing that we relied on. And so, you know, by stocking up, you know, Tom, you're talking about the fire sale by stocking up and loading the truck and, and, you know, now you are set when it comes to, um, soups, uh, this particular week. And next week you are absolutely set for months, you know, when it comes to health and beauty items, whatever it may be. Now, this is really good because let's say you do have an unexpected expense and the average American or the average Canadian is spending, you know, north of eight, nine hundred dollars a month to feed your food, uh, feed your family, and add on top of that all the eating out money. And now we're talking like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars a month. I mean, that is a huge ticket item. And so if now you have this food savings account, well, look at that, you know, let's say you could, uh, and I remember when, when I, at the very beginning of Savings Angel, I had actually started my website and it started taking off, um, but uh, I still had a full-time job. Now that job went away, but thankfully we had uh, a lot of food set aside. And so we were able to go to that and I was able to feed my family, get this, on uh, less than $100 a month. And so the $600, $700 that we had been spending previous to that, uh, you know, we could now use to make sure that we were paying our utility bill. So a food savings account is very easy for anybody to do. All you have to do is shop a little smarter, stock up, and you'll start building that food savings account and then it's always there for you. Just don't end up, uh, I remember growing up, I had a friend who, uh, his mother went a little crazy with the food savings account and, uh, you know, they had stacks of ramen noodles on every shelf and uh, soup cans in the closet and, you yeah. know. You're in the bathroom. Now, I got 24 packs sitting on the on the side. You know, the yeah. here's the thing. Here's the thing on that. Um, you know, some people will say, you know, well, I don't have the space to to stock up on food. Uh, if if Ed McMahon, bless his heart, came back from the dead, he'd look pretty creepy looking. Uh, but let's say I'm just trying to think of like someone who awards prizes, and I'm not sure who his modern contemporary is. I just remember him from Publisher Clearinghouse, and um, you know, imagine he shows up and he's like, you know, I'm going to give you five thousand dollars worth of groceries, but you have to buy it all today. You know, would you take the money or would you say no? Nah, Get out of here. I No, no thanks. No, you keep the money. No, we wouldn't. We would take it and we would buy it and we would find we would find places to put that uh, that that product either that or we'd give it away. And that is a huge part as well of why we do what we do with Savings Angel is because I believe I firmly, firmly believe that the best way, the most effective way to end hunger, lack and need in our communities is you just empower good people to do what they want to do. But here's the problem. It's that scarcity that keeps us from giving what we'd want to give and, and doing what we want to do. So we feel that our cups are not full enough to be givers. Well, if, if I can help people make some changes in how they shop and feed their family, all of a sudden everybody's got an overflowing cup and now everybody can be a giver. And I would, I would estimate that Savings Angel, over the nine years that we've been doing what we've been doing, uh, has collectively assisted in the donation of over $10 million worth of products to uh, to charities, to churches, to church pantries, um, to those who are struggling. Um, it's a it's a core part of why we do what we do. It's our mission. Now, would you say that being healthier in your shopping and your eating, exercising more, um, doing things along those lines, that that could positively affect your finances? Well, yes, uh, because have. yes, because you know, here's what comes to mind here. Right? You think yeah. fitness, right? And you think New Year's, and you go, "I'm going to join a gym. This is going to be the year." And before you know it, you've got this credit card charge for like 50 bucks a month um, for a gym you never use, <laughs> and no. it's not really helping your finances at all. It's not helping your health at all, um, and it just ends up 
being something that you ignore and never try again. Mm, you know, and a lot of people will keep paying that gym membership as kind of a, it, it's almost they treat it like a fat tax, uh, where uh, they feel that that's their penalty for not getting into the gym. And by the way, I think it's always funny, like, you know, you know, sometimes I, uh, I, I, I'm getting a kick out of this because we're doing this by a video. And sometimes, like, when you ask me a question and I start doing this, you know, like all these sound effects, I see Miranda and I see, like, Peter, like, laughing every time I do that. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. And here's the thing, too. When you're living more healthily, again, you have more options because if, uh, if you are, you know, let's say you're living, your health's messed up, and as a result, your diabetes is up, your blood, your cholesterol's up. Look, I used to have problems with all that stuff. And uh, because, uh, you know, I got my other stuff in alignment, now, health-wise, I have more options. Uh, I can run up and down the steps without losing my breath. I could play with my kids without losing my breath. You know, when we go on vacations now, our, our uh, options for vacations are far better because I enjoy living an active, healthy lifestyle. And so that's a part of it, too. And the fact that my, you know, we're a really healthy family now because we really just have... Uh, placed a high priority on people. And as a result, you know, I don't think anyone in our family has um, expensive prescription medicines. And, um, you know, we just have a lot more freedoms as a result of uh, living a life of healthful abundance. So in, in what ways has that actually translated to, to your finances directly? You know what I mean? Like, how is that that become the one thing, you know, because I, I think a lot of people, they think if I'm going to be healthier, it's going to cost me money. Yeah. And, and I'm, I don't necessarily say that that's the case. Yeah. But I know that the argument is out there. You know, a lot of people don't want to shop for healthier food. They think it's too expensive. They don't want to um, take part in certain things because they think there's too much of a cost to get into it. So, you know, sell it to those people. So being mindful about the food that you buy for your family is going to bring a return on investment without question. We know this. I mean, everybody knows this. And if they don't admit to it, then they're lying to themselves. And they know they're lying to themselves. So again, can you still buy the healthy food and save money? Yes, you can. You can absolutely do it. I, I'm not saying that anybody has to spend more money uh, to live a healthier lifestyle. You could absolutely do this, but you're either going to you're going to either pay just a little bit in sweat equity, and I'm not talking. I'm talking maybe 20, 30 minutes of just. Hitting up a coupon, hitting up our coupon database, seeing what's available, right, and and taking advantage of some of those really great offers in our blog. You know, we really try to include a good cross section of products of stuff that you can go and you can go to your local store and you can get and you can save a lot of money. So those opportunities for savings are out there. Uh, your other option, so you either you know invest a little bit of sweat equity, an extra 20, 30 minutes to heaven forbid, do a little research on the internet before you hit the store, uh, or your other option is to you know you can. You you could pay for the luxury. But, in, and again, return on investment, I've heard the argument, and I would tend to agree with the argument uh, that if you invest in healthier foods for your family, in the long run, you know, your kids are going to, you know, I, I can speak for, you know, my one of my children. Uh, if, if he eats a lot of junk, red, junk uh, food and sugar and red 40 and a bunch of garbage, it's going to affect him behaviorally big time. And so we know that it's important for us to make sure that he gets great quality food. And as a result, well, we don't have to put him on ADD medicine. It's that stark um, of, of a difference. You know, I, I, and you know, you, there's that difference, but I also think that it goes back to what we were talking about earlier in the, in the show too. Um, if you're a little bit healthier, you're a little less stressed. Yes. You have a little bit more your head's kind of there. Mm -hmm. Better decisions. Well, you know, and, and can we earn more money and can we move ahead better in all areas of our life, including financially, if we are living with less stress, if we're more focused, if we're mo more open to thinking clearly and, you know, thinking of things that can make our life a lot easier? Well, all these things, you know, if we're, if we're feeding our body with the stuff that we know that our body craves, right? Our body craves nutrients. Our, our body craves protein. Our body 
craves, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables. That you know, I, you know, that's pretty uh, obvious. I think everybody agrees with that sentiment. And so, um, you know, those are the things that that we will have. And so, um, will you do better at work? Probably. I, I can almost guarantee that. And you know, one subject um, that that we kind of chatted about before we began this program um, was meditation. And meditation. Look, I'm I'm as far from a new agey kind of guy as you could possibly get. Um, and I don't particularly enjoy meditation, like the practice of it and doing it. Uh, I think it bores me to tears, uh, quite frankly, just like sitting in a quiet room, for, you know, silent for 20 minutes. It's really hard for me. I have one of those minds that doesn't just doesn't shut up. It's like, uh, you know, hearing my own voice and how I talk. That's how my mind is. Um, so imagine that. So, um, you know, but that said, I don't know why, but when I'm good and I'm, I, I, I'm, uh, you know, develop the habit and the pattern of meditating in, and I think anybody can do it in whatever way works for them. You know, if it's prayer, great. If it's just shutting up and, and trying to calm your thoughts, um, that would be great. Um, guided med, I have to do guided meditation. Like I, I gotta have some, somebody giving me some structure. Um, maybe I'll get better at this in the future. Uh, but here's what happens. I'm a better father. I'm a better husband. I'm way more productive at work. Stuff that would normally rattle me just doesn't rattle me. I'm just like, uh, like I'm just chill about everything when I'm uh, much more mindful in my life. And I become more mindful in my life when I am very conscious about uh, saying, oh, you know what, I just have to have that 15, 20 minutes of silence where I can center myself. And for some reason, when I do it, life is easier. When I don't do it, life is harder. So I have to invest that time each day. And it's made a huge difference in my life. And, you know, and, and I would almost say, and I don't know, I mean, you know, I don't know if there's some metaphysical reasons for this, you know, through prayer and meditation. And again, I don't mean to get all out and on the edge outer limits here but i've just seemed to again maybe it's um uh you know maybe i'm just kind of manifesting it and i believe it's happening and so it happens but i just feel like i'm i'm luckier <laughs> like good stuff happens when i feel like i'm more in alignment and i'm more centered and i'm more peaceful you, you know it, it, i think of it maybe as my my fuse is longer mm. right it, i I have some a little more space before I explode, mm -hmm. and by having that, you see um, different opportunities that are always arising, but you see them now because you have a little bit of that space. So now you can walk through that door if it opens. Whereas yeah. before, when you shoot fuses short, you're not really noticing it. Yeah, yeah, and I think that I I, I see myself doing things as well on top of that. I, I, that's such a great point. I love that. I love that analogy, and I so I see myself doing that, and I also see myself doing things that um I I think maybe fear would limit me, and I I try never to let fear limit my actions, but it does, uh, and so I find myself you know doing asking for more audacious things or reaching out to someone who is like, oh, geez, you know, who am I to, you know, send this person an email and, and ask for something like that. But, you know, I feel like I just feel so much more confident in who I am, right? I, I feel less of just a person running around with, you know, uh, you know, flesh and bones and but meat, this meat suit running around, um, you know, and I feel more like centered, like, um, you know, maybe there is something inside of me, like a spirit or whatever it is. Again, don't mean to go far too hard on the edges if there's someone who's getting really uncomfortable with this right now. But hey, <laughs> I am totally, look, I totally empathize with the person who's like, man, I'm not into that stuff. All I would ask you to do is find a way that works for you and just try it out. Just experiment it. Experiment with this and see what happens. It's like the same thing with the eating, uh, right? Uh, try cutting out sugar for one week or two weeks, just as an experiment. And, and you come back to me and you tell me what you find out. And if you like what the results of that experiment were, then you can keep doing it. If you didn't, you know, made no difference or you didn't really care, uh, then, you know, go back to eating sugar. But, you know, at least experiment. Try this stuff out. I think, you know, all life is an experiment. Yeah, yeah. 
and I, I think we could talk about this and do a whole other show um, on that subject, but again, I don't want to go off too much on that. Um, I think we've had a great show. We've talked a lot about uh, the things that you choose to do will affect your finances, and what we like to do here is when we're finishing up a show, we, we like to have a final thought uh, about what we think about it. So we'll start with Tom. What are, your, what are your final thoughts about how your lifestyle can affect your finances? Well, I think it all goes together because self-improvement in general can kind of be catchy. <laughs> like, well, once you once you start fixing one thing, you you start wanting to fix something else. Like for me, it's 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 money, it's eating, it's sleep, everything. If I can kind of improve things, you just go from one to the other, and I, I think that's probably why they go hand in hand a lot too. It's not just that one causes the other, but you just become that kind of person that wants to improve different aspects as you go. And Peter, what's your final word? All right. Well, my final word is just to, uh, you know, you don't have to change all of your life habits and all, all your negative habits all at once. Just start small. Start with something that you can that you can affect. You know, for me, I, I've been losing weight here for the past uh, couple of months, you know, and I just started small. All I did was change a few of my eating habits, and I'm, I'm down 30 pounds, you know, just by nice. making daily different decisions about what I'm eating. Same thing can be happen with your finances. You know, make small savings amounts every month. You know, and over time, that's going to add up quickly. Take a, a money minute every day, every morning, and just look at your finances and see where you are, and think about where you want to be. So, start small and work your way up. Miranda, what's your final word? I, I think it just goes back to taking a look at the whole and kind of taking a, a holistic approach to it and saying, well, how does this all interconnect? How is the way I use my money and how is my money situation affecting the way I feel about myself and I feel about my life and my satisfaction level and vice versa? How, how do all these things connect together? And then figuring out a strategy that works for you and helps you reach your goals. And, and once again, like Peter said, you got to take it a little bit at a time. You can't do a complete overhaul all, all at once. Josh, if you give us your final word. Ha, ah, my final word is that, you know, the person who's been listening to this conversation, I just want to reaffirm that you are in the right place at the right time. I'm such a believer in, you know, in, you know, in finding those, those little pearls every day and every day that you grow just a little bit more. I mean, that's, that's where true satisfaction comes from growing. And so the fact that, that you're listening to this program, I know that there's something that you've heard that you said, oh, yeah, maybe I can try that or maybe I'll experiment on that thing. And, you know, that's why I love podcasts because there's just so much great stuff that we have access to right now. So I would encourage that person who's listening to keep on listening and to keep on tuning in and search for those things uh, that are going to help you move forward in life. Thanks a lot, Josh, and thanks for a great show and for sharing your knowledge. Uh, for people out there that may not be familiar with you, um, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and about Savings Angel. Yeah, for consumers, I do so much work to help consumers save a lot of money at Savings angel.com. We've got lots of free stuff, free videos, free coupons, all kinds of stuff. Now for business owners, I also do a lot of work helping business owners get tons and tons of publicity. I am uh, Savings Angel grew into a multi-million dollar business because I know how to work with the media really well. And I'm a syndicated newspaper columnist and I do a lot of syndicated TV work as well. And so uh, I love, I'm so passionate about working with business owners. So if there happens to be that business owner who's been listening to us and you want some free stuff got tons of free stuff at millions in free media.com sounds good Josh thank you again um, for joining us and everybody out there thank you for listening and until next week be good with your money Thanks for joining us on the Money Mastermind Show. Get more information at moneymastermindshow.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube and follow us on Google+.